Okay, many of you guys may be wondering, what if we change the initial value from the previous example to become y of 3 is equal to negative 5 instead of the 0 right here? What will happen? I know you know what will happen, but let me just put it on the board for you guys, okay? So, of course, we are going to verify if this right here has a unique solution or not. So, right here, this is the point now, 3, comma, negative 5. And this is still my f of x, y, so let me write it down. f of x, y is still it's the same one, x minus 1, or over y. And let's do this real quick. When you plug in 3 into here, 3 minus 2, you know, works. This time, when you plug in negative 5 into the denominator, it's good too, right? All in all, this is continuous around this point. And if you want to show what, just really write it down. This is continuous around this point, which is 3, comma, negative 5. And this is the first criteria for the existence and uniqueness theorem, right? The next one is, we have to look at this and do the partial derivative with respect to y. So let me put that down. Partial f with respect to y, this will be x minus 1 will be considered a constant, so let me put it down right here. And we will differentiate 1 over y, and the derivative of 1 over y is negative 1 over y squared. And now, you see, if you plug in 3 into x, this is you know, good. Plug in negative 5 into y, this is also good. Everything together, you know, nothing goes wrong, right? So it's continuous. The only bad guy that will make this discontinuous is y equal to 0. That's why I changed to something that's not 0. But anyways, this right here is also continuous around the point 3, comma, negative 5. So you see, both criteria are satisfied. It. That means we can be sure this initial value problem has to have a unique solution. So right here, I can put down, yes. Now we know this must to have just one answer, one and only one, okay? And the reason I want to do this again with you guys is because during the algebra process earlier, we take the plus minus, and it seems like we'll always end up with plus minus, but you will see we still will just end up with one and only one. Anyways, let's get to work for this. Multiply uh, y on both sides, we have y dy equals to multiply with dx, so we have x minus 1 dx, and then integrate, integrate. Left hand side, we get y squared over 2. This is equal to x squared over 2 minus x plus c. Plug in negative 5 into y, so we have negative 5 squared over 2, and this is equal to plugging 3 into x, we have 3 square over 2 minus another 3 right here for the x, right? And plus c. And this is pretty much just 25 over 2 equals to 9 over 2 minus this is pretty much 6 over 2 plus c. These two together is 3 over 2. Minus 3 over 2 on both sides. 25 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is 22 over 2. That means c will be 11. And here we will have y squared over 2 equals to x squared over 2 minus x. And c is 11, so I'll just put on plus 11. And usual deal, we multiply everything by 2. So you see this is y squared equals to this times that, which is just x squared. This times that is minus 2x. This times that is plus 22. What's next? Well, this is what I was saying earlier. y squared is equal to this. I need to isolate the y, right? By the way, this right here, a unique solution, it's a y function of x, okay? A unique solution means y has to be a function of x, y of x only. So we must isolate the y when you are talking about these kind of things. We still have to take the square root on both sides. I agree. And when you do the square root on both sides, yes, they cancel, but don't forget to put a plus minus. And now it seems like, earlier I said I must have a unique solution, but it seems like we have the first answer, y is equal to positive square root of x squared minus 2x plus 22. And the other one, 
y is equal to negative square root of x squared minus 2x plus 22. It seems like we still end up with two answers, right? Well, what's wrong with this? In fact, one of this is not correct. Once again, you must have only one answer, a unique solution to this. And which one is it? Well, uh, which one is it? Both of this will satisfy the original differential equation. However, not both of them will satisfy this initial value. When x is 3, y must be negative 5. And you see that if you put y is 5 right here, let me just put this for you. If you put y is equal to 5 and you have the square root, and you have the 3 square, or negative 5, sorry. If you put negative 5 for y, you know this is wrong already, but I just want to show you guys all the work. Minus 2 times 3 uh, plus 22. You know this is wrong already because square root of something can never be negative, right? This is wrong. That means this is in fact not a solution. In fact, this will be the correct one because I can still put negative 5 for y. And I will just show you guys all the work real quick. And you have the negative square root, right? And you have the 3 square and things like that. Minus 2 times 3 plus 22. This is still correct. This is still correct. So, as promised, you only have one answer. The only solution is this one. Earlier, both of this work because y was equal to 0 for the initial value, right? And this is the only solution. You don't have to bother to look for a constant solution or whatnot because you can never find it anyways because the existence and uniqueness theorem says so. That's it.